Sarah Palin is part of two compelling storylines as Alaska votes today. One is her personal comeback hope. She is running for Congress 14 years after splashing onto the national stage as John McCain's running mate and the 2008 Republican nominee for vice president. The former Alaska governor has had stints since then as a reality TV star, a Fox contributor, and now is the Trump-backed candidate for Alaska's House seat. She's actually on today's ballot twice. First, voters pick a candidate to finish the final four months of the late Congressman Don Young's term. Then, voters also pick candidates for the November ballot and a full two-year term for that House seat. And as they do so, look at this ballot. Alaskans will use a new system of ranked choice voting today. The ballot asks you your first choice and then allows you to rank the candidates from there. Our great reporters are back with us. And this makes it a really fascinating experiment. Mm -hmm. Other states have tried this more and more. Um, let's just show you how it works. Put the graphic up of how it works. Uh, you rank your candidates. Number one, you pick your first choice. If somebody gets 50 plus, they're the winner. If nobody crosses the 50% threshold, the, lo the lowest candidate leaves and you go and count their, the, the count their ballots who, well, who's their second choice for the lowest candidate? And you go through this until somebody gets to 50%. The goal is to force Republicans to talk to Democrats and to force Democrats to talk to Republicans because you might need to be somebody's second choice. It can be a confusing process until we all get used to it as more states adopt this practice, but it is a good idea in theory. It is good that you don't only have to appeal to the base of your party and that you have to speak to a wide, wider number of the electorate. And we're going to see more candidates run trying to seek out um, more voters. Uh, and so again, this could be a little confusing, especially if you're not in Alaska, maybe even if you're in Alaska today, you're voting twice for the House of Representatives. One is to fill the remaining months of Don Young's term. There are three candidates on the ballot today, Mary Peltola, Nick Begich, and Sarah Palin. Uh, that's your choice today. One of them will be a member of Congress for about four months. Mm -hmm. And then in November, we can show you those same three candidates, uh, plus you'll see Tara Sweeney here, plus about uh, 18 or 19 others, or 20 plus candidates. These are considered the four leading candidates here. Let's focus on today and listen to the three candidates, one of whom will be in Congress as early as next week. It's a shame that the McCain-Phelan campaign kind of had some shackles on me, not allowed to go rogue, because that's what our country needs right now. I'm Nick Begich. I'm not a politician, but I'm the only candidate for Congress endorsed by the Alaska Republican Party. They know I'll put Alaska first, fight for energy independence, and I'll never quit. Leader of the Kuskokwim River Intertribal Fish Commission, working to protect Alaska salmon, and the only candidate fighting for abortion rights. I'm Mary Peltola, and I approve this message. The, the last, the Democratic candidate there, Mary Peltola, interesting because everywhere Democrats are looking for clues as to whether the abortion debate helps them motivate voters. Alaska is known as a Republican state, uh, sends Republicans to Congress for the most part, but that'll be, again, one of the tests. Oh, absolutely. It'll be telling to see what the results are, which we won't have tonight. It's right. something that could take a few weeks before Thank we have any idea. Thank you for reminding people of that Any one. idea. <laughs> it's seeing it and thinking, okay, it's a it's primary night, but right. we still have a ways away before we have the results. But, but it will be interesting, too, because with the ranked choice, we're going to see conservatives splitting the vote, and then that gives you know, that gives this candidate and the Democrat an opportunity as well to, to rack up those votes in a different way. Um, but I think, I mean, we're seeing, too, with, with this ranked choice, Palin already has talked about it as the screwiest system. We're already seeing how are, you know, how are candidates going to try and manipulate this in the future and talk about it. It, it is interesting uh, to watch. Uh, she was very compelling as John McCain's vice presidential candidate. That a lot of Republicans will uh, also argue maybe she wasn't prepared to be John McCain's vice presidential candidate. But well, oftentimes when you leave politics, you don't come back. It is interesting to see, A, if she can come back, and B, if the Trump endorsement helps. And, and also, if she's going to enjoy, if she wins, being a member of Congress. Right. You know, this <laughs> there is, is that. <laughs> a freshman backbench member of Congress. Right. But she does have Trump's endorsement. Begich is a very popular, or a common name, or I say, well known name right. in Alaska as well. His uncle and his father are also right. politicians in Alaska, so he's well known too. Um, and there's not a lot of polling in Alaska. We'll see where it right. lands. And, I mean, her reentry seems opportunistic on its surface. So that is the high bar. You know, she has to appeal to these voters and say, hey, I actually really want this job. I was looking on her campaign website, and her number one issue is oil and gas drilling. I don't think about Sarah Palin as a legislator. I don't think about the issues when I think of her, and I think this is a rebranding exercise that she's trying to engage in. I honestly think of the mass Singer.